Hi, welcome to a one item mailbag. Um, because I'm so excited about this one, I'm not gonna bother opening anything else. Thank you very much to Swiss Micros for sending in the DM42. Oh, spoiler alert, sorry. For all you calculator aficionados, we've had a look at the uh, Swiss Micro products before. They are uh, recreations of the famous Hewlett Packard uh, Voyager series and this one is the same as the HP uh, 15 the Voyager landscape uh, format like this absolutely classic they're they're fantastic highly recommended um, and we've got the HP 42 for those who are familiar a very classic calculator the HP 42 so this is Swiss Micro's recreation of that and I did own a HP 42 at one stage, but I sold it, so sorry, I don't have one to show you a side by side. But the exciting thing about this is that it's the world's most precise calculator. Oh, let's have a look. Oh, it's wrapped for our protection. That's actually, that's, it's, it's hermetically sealed for our protection. Oh, beautiful. Let's have a squiz. Oh, here it comes. Wait for it. Oh, I don't want all the electrons to fall out. Let's open it up the right way. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's got an e-ink display, does it? Because it's already on. Oh, 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 and feel the, oh, the metal. None of that plastic rubbish. Oh, feels, there's a nice meaty weight in that. That feels absolutely fantastic. Sorry, my lights, the angle of the... Uh, the new lights, just due to the tire, where the tiles and the orientation of the tiles in the roof, it's really annoying. But I'll put up an image of the uh, original HP 42. You'll notice that it's uh, it it's got to be taller because it's got a bigger screen. Obviously, a, a multi well, it's a full dot matrix screen. The original uh, HP 42 was of course a dual line uh, dot matrix display. Got some extra soft buttons here, um, and you'll probably notice these extra uh, letters on here. It's got a full um, alphabetic uh, keyboard added to it. But apart from that, I believe the functionality looks exactly the same. All your um, shift functions and stuff like that and all your keys, apart from that, are identical. So it should just out of the box work like a HP 42S, I believe. So the good thing about this is that is, as I said, the world's most precise calculator. None of this double precision rubbish. This is quadruple precision. IEEE 754 for those playing along at home, uh, which uses, uh, I believe, 16 bytes per number to actually uh, store that. And it can do 34 digit precision and plus minus 6,144 exponent. That, none of that plus minus 99 rubbish. And by the way, the software for this is actually open source because it's actually based on the original uh, Free42 uh, software from Thomas Ocken on the and uh, from other people, I believe, on the uh, HP Museum Calculator Forum, which I used to be big on back in the day. Sorry, I don't visit much anymore. And Swiss Micros have taken that, added on, added on a you know a GUI and a whole interface for it and stuff like that. Oh, anyway, it it just looks and feels beautiful. Can I, Oh, the, the keys, I don't know. Oh, how do you compare it with the original? Let's compare it with the 41C. Oh, sorry, but this isn't feel a vision but damn, that's close. If I close my eyes, oh, stick the tongue at the right angle. Out there, there, that's pretty similar. It's a very similar feel. So, the yeah, tactile dome's in there somewhere. Anyway, let's turn it on. Here we go. Oh, I assume it's got a battery. Oh, look at that, look at that, X, Y, Z, T, L registers. Oh, and that booted up instantly, none of this Windows calculator rubbish. Oh, got a battery indicator and time and date at the top. Fantastic, so let's, let's do something, shall we? Let's go to, whack it on the stack, and let's do square root, shall we? 1.41, like, how do we get our precision? Oh, out of the box, I want to see my 34 digits. I'll tell you what though, that is a pretty nice display. It's very like paper white. It's going to be hard to show here due to the reflections and it's pretty decent. If you keep it flat on the bench like this and then look at it at an angle and that's pretty good. Not sure if I'm a fan of the dot inside the zero though. Hmm. 
And I did find that this function button here actually um, increased the font size and that's much nicer. That just adds lines like that and shifts it at uh, right justification instead of left for all you right justification fanboys. That does nothing, that does nothing. There's a beep there. It's kind of a bit low but you know you don't want it too loud. And that button calls up the menu and this one error while reading help file. Why? Uh, oops. Someone do we need to install it? I don't know. Anyway, font size, yep. Format, oh, oh that's volume. Yep, volume's getting louder. Can't do reverse font size, do I have to press shift? Yep, there we go. Shift. <laughs> wow, that's pretty small. I like that better. Alright, so let's go into the display. Well, there's your problem. All. Oh, we want to see. Oh, is that all it gives you? Let's try that again. Maybe we can fix it to a larger number. <laughs> can we do 30? 11. Nah. That's what? Okay, so it's got the internal precision, but how do we display it? Oh? Anyway, for those who don't know, we've got the double width inner key, RPN, of course, none of this algebraic rubbish. I'm sure it doesn't even have the ability to go into algebraic mode. <laughs> Sacrilege. So the HP42 included uh, additional functionality and matrix solvers and all sorts of stuff over the uh, 41, but it didn't have like the um, expandability and stuff like that that the 41 did and the magnetic card reader and all the rest of it. But, you know, it made up for that by being a more advanced thing. And this, I think, thickness, this might be a fraction thinner, if memory serves me correctly, than the original 42, at least at this bottom end. The HP 42 was, was supposed to be the replacement for the, uh, the HP 15 uh, Voyager, but of course everyone loved their Voyager series. There's lots of Voyager series fanboys out there. And on the back, we've got a reset thing, so I'm guessing that must be something else. I can see something in there. Is that like an, some sort of infrared thing, perhaps? So I know you want to see inside it, so let's crack it open. There's two screws here. Looks like they've got some clips up the top, so that's pretty nice. Yes, copyright 2017. It's been out for a while. Retail price of about 230 Yankee bucks, and I think that's a bargain for a quality calculator. It's beautiful. Oh, it's, it's, the quality's... Oh, look at the metal threaded inserts. Oh, fantastic. How do I... Yeah, all right. It's not going to readily come apart. No, it turns out just needed a small helping hand. And as I suspected, yep, they had a plastic clip. So, oh, I've got a black gloss, black uh, solder mask. Give me a break. Anyway, there it is. We've got an uh, uh, ST arm micro. And of course, you don't need much more. It's all just one. Micro, that's it. I can't read the number off there, but uh, I'll put up the uh, specs for that. But that's all she wrote, really. And a big ass speaker in there. Looks like a single CR2032 there. Oh, a couple of little secret squirrel switches. Reset and unnamed. Ooh. <laughs> We've got our serial and uh, programming headers there. So I'm not sure if that's how you update the firmware or whether or not there's a a remote uh, USB. I'd be surprised if there's not a remote USB update and a bootloader in there. And we've got a pin out for another, what looks like another uh, spy header up there. Release LCD connection before unscrewing PCB. Will do. Thank you very much. Calcbase 3B. So everyone, oh yeah, look. <laughs> a, take out that first. B, take out these screws. Oh, nice. Someone was thinking and the base of the board here connected with these plastic clips down in here. So this is a really nice design, very well thought out and put together. So let's crack it open because of course we want to see the, uh, the tactile domes on there. Are they Snaptrons or anything like that? Sorry, I didn't follow the uh, development of this. I'm sure it's out there. I think they're quite transparent about the stuff that they do. Bloody gloss black solder mask. Hate it. Altium ruined me for life. Everything they did was gloss black. It's just going to come out in one hit. Ah, oh, fantastic. There you go. For you dome aficionados, check that out. Are they Snaptrons? I don't know. I could get out my Snaptron kit. I've got like, you know, 20 different types of Snaptron domes in a kit when I was developing calculators. 
Ah, uh, it's not feel of vision sorry. But of course, HP was famous for their uh, calculator, you know, the feel of their keys, the snap of their keys. Wow, yeah, that's all molded into the one thing. Yeah, I think it's entirely integrated with the, with the front case mold. You can see the little lever arm on there. I don't know about, you know, long term of these sorts of things, but uh, a lot of effort's gone into this. You see that they had to do the uh, extra colour shot there to get the yellow key. Beautiful. Then we've got the metal threaded inserts. Fantastic. So that really comes uh, apart very nicely for servicing and for changing the battery and it's terrific. I'm impressed. And that whole bottom, oh, steel metal thing. I don't know what type of metal that is. I don't know. Someone will tell me. And of course with quadruple precision on the world's most precise mul uh, multimeter. I was going to say multimeter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's most precise calculator. <laughs> it should pass the calculator forensics with flying colors. So anyway, that's the most number of di display digits I can get. So what we want to do is nine. Got to put it on the stack because this is RPN. And then we go sine, cosine, tangent, shift, arc tangent, arc cosine, arc sine. Nine. Bang on. And I've been running through this a bunch of times. <laughs> I still can't get it to fail because it's not going to be round back to nine it's probably internally is still accumulating digits or whatever or losing them um then they're way outside the uh, way outside the display window that's for sure i think that's got to be 10 times now yeah pretty precise one thing i don't get is why is this the largest font size we can get i mean there's obviously like there's a wasted line up there maybe because like you call up the menu of course and it shifts it up maybe but i, I don't know anyway it would have been nice to uh maybe it could have like automatically dropped back when you call up the menu to that rather than like change the font size allow bigger and i don't understand why you'd want to go that small if you can't get all those digits so yeah and you might ask, well, with this gorgeous large screen on here, can we, like, do plots, graphing, and all that sort of stuff? Well, the answer is, yeah, you kind of can. The HP 42 had rudimentary graphing capability, but it wasn't actually built in. You had to actually write a program for it. It's fairly extensive. I couldn't be bothered, and, yeah, I could get a sine wave up, but... Yeah, it, it really wasn't a graphing calculator, the HP 42, and neither is this, because it doesn't have any other functionality, as far as I'm aware, um, apart from the 42S. That was the whole goal of the project. Is it my imagination, or is that top line on L there, like, missing a line on top? I think it is. Look, look at the three. The three, like, nicely rounded threes here, but a sort of a chopped off three there. Don't think I'm imagining that. There you go, it fixed it. Yeah, there's something doing there. They got some nice backgrounds in here and you get a different one every time you power it uh, off and on. So let's do a program. It should be much easier with the multi-line uh, display, although it still works. The menu-based system still works exactly like the original uh, 42S. So what we do is we go shift program function, which will give us all our program functions up here on our soft buttons. And then we have to label our program first. And then it, this is how you entered the uh, letters in, you know, back in the day. Um, although, can we just go shift? Let's try it. Shift R over here. If we does it recognize that we're in that? No, it doesn't. It doesn't recognize that we're in that mode, like label mode, and it won't let us do that. Oh, that's a bit of a bummer. R. There we go. R. O. O. T. So I like a good root, so let's solve for a root. So let's have a look at our program here. We're going to actually solve the roots for this thing here. So we'll go up. There we go. We can see it. It's a bit, <laughs> bit convoluted. <laughs> there you go. It's not the greatest, but hey, this is how the original HP 42 actually worked. So let's actually run that. So we'll go uh, solver. Oh, do we have to exit from that? No, I can't remember. No, I think we can just, yep, we do. <laughs> Oops, have I goofed it up? No, I don't think so. Get out of program mode. Okay, solver. 
And then there's our program called root. So we'll select root and then we'll make guesses for x. So it's um, there's our variable. It knows we've got the variable inside the program. So 1 and 10 and then x and bingo, x is our first root. That was our previous guess there. So now we can actually, this thing has two roots, so we can find another one. So let's go, say, minus one. There we go, that's better. <laughs> and there's our second root. Fantastic. Love a good root. So there you go, that's the new Swiss Micros DM42. Well, it's not new, sorry. It's been out for quite some time, and it's absolutely fantastic. And it's really for the calculator aficionados um, who love their HP42, because, of course, yeah, there are... Well, I'm going to get attacked for saying this. There are better, more usable calculators. But if you're a fan of the HP 42, it was discontinued. Started in 85, it was discontinued in the early 90s. And this is a direct replacement for it with a quad precision instead of, um, what was double precision? I assume the original uh, 42 was. So absolutely fantastic and the build quality design and build quality of this thing is absolutely brilliant and it represents uh, many many years of um effort by uh thomas otkin and the um calculator community actually uh coming up with the free 42 software which this thing is based on and you can get it on that same platform uh, that same free 42 software on other platforms but they built a physical hardware platform for it and it's it's first class quality it just it feels fantastic so hats off i think it's probably worth every cent of the like 230 bucks i know you know a lot of people will say oh why bother you can't beat a real calculator this is fantastic but i still prefer my casio algebraics sorry although i do own quite a few hps i've used them over the years i guess my only complaint and it is minor i would have preferred to have a larger and bolder font on the top of the keys the the yellow in here is absolutely gorgeous really visible but it really is quite thin on some of the other keys here and if you compare that to the original hp uh, 42 then you can kind of see the difference but yeah hats off this thing's brilliant huge thumbs up so if you want to discuss it down below catch you next time